This is the first of three videos in which we will learn Fusion 360 in an easy way. First, to navigate around the screen, you can use these controls at the bottom, or on a Mac trackpad, you can simply pinch to zoom. You can use two finger swipes to pan, and you would use this view cube in order to orbit. You can simply grab it by a corner and rotate it. In order to return to the home view, you press home. Now let's begin sketching. In Fusion 360, everything starts with a sketch and then you manipulate those two-dimensional sketches in order to make three-dimensional objects. If you drop down the sketch menu, you will see uh, the various commands. The most common ones that everyone uses are line, rectangle, specifically the two-point rectangle, circle, uh, especially the center diameter circle, and spline. Um, let's customize our um, quick menu. Um, get rid of this item over here. Um, pull down the menu and go to rectangle, two-point rectangle, go to this curved arrow and press it. It'll add that to the quick menu. Do the same thing with the center diameter circle. Add that to your quick menu and do the same thing to the spline tool. All right, now we're ready to sketch. Let's begin by drawing a line. You grab the line tool. The first thing that will happen is that um, Fusion will ask you to choose which plane you want to draw upon. Let's choose the horizontal plane. Um, then it will give you the coordinate system uh, for the horizontal plane and it will open the sketch palette. This is called the origin. It's good to uh, anchor your sketches onto the origin. So I'm going to start at the origin and click and click and click. The line tool simply gives you a collection of uh, uh, lines that are attached to each other. In order to stop the line tool, you can either press this check mark or you can press escape. All right, now I can grab any of these points and move them around in order to refine my shape. Um, notice, however, that at this point over here, if I move it, these two lines will always stay at a right angle to each other. That's because as I was drawing this shape, I uh, drew these lines fairly close to a right angle and Fusion took the liberty of assuming that I want a right angle and so it, it made them a right angle to each other and produced this icon uh, which means a right angle constraint. Also, it uh, made these two lines parallel to each other because I had made them fairly parallel to each other. Um, it's trying to help you out but if you don't want these lines for example to be uh, perpendicular, you can simply click on the perpendicular constraint and uh, press delete. And now you can uh, move those lines at different angles. Or if you want to add a, a perpendicular constraint between two lines, you can simply go to the sketch palette, click out of it first, it'll uh, reveal all of your constraints and uh, select the perpendicular, perpendicular constraint, uh, click on one line, click on an adjacent line, and it'll make it perpendicular. You can do the same thing with this line and this line. When you are done with what you need to do, then make sure you press escape in order to um, get out of the constraint mode. Now notice that this is not a closed shape. Uh, in order to be able to, be able to make a three-dimensional object, I need to close my shape. Um, grab my um, line tool again and go from here to here. Um, press Escape. 
to get out of the line tool and now it's very important to say stop sketch. Now notice that when I make a closed shape uh, the area uh, within the shape becomes highlighted um, so I'm ready to uh, uh, extrude that or uh, use other tools um, to uh, turn it into a uh, three-dimensional uh, object which we'll go over. All right, let's start a new design. Go under File, say New Design. Um, let's use the Spline tool. Again, let's select the horizontal plane. Uh, the Spline tool allows us to draw curves. So press on the origin and do what I'm doing over here. I'm going to try to make a heart. And close your shape. And then press Escape to get out of the Spline tool. The nice thing about the Spline tool is that you can move these points around in order to change the curvature of your curve uh, or you can click on the curve itself and then you have these uh, control lines which you can manipulate uh, to change the curvature locally. Uh, but if I wanted to create a nice heart that didn't have these uh, smooth transitions over here I would first have to create a half heart So I grab the spline tool again, I draw my half heart, press on the check mark, press escape to get out of the spline tool, click outside the curve, I can move these points if I need to, to adjust my shape. Then I'll have to create a line of symmetry, so I'm going to grab my line tool, click over here and here, uh, that'll create a closed shape. I escape out of that. Then I'll go to the sketch menu and grab mirror. I'm going to select the object that is going to be mirrored, which is my half heart and then select the mirror line which is my straight line and that will give me a heart. I'll press OK. And of course I can go back and delete the mirror line and I have a heart. Say stop sketch. All right. Now uh, we can go back into the sketch uh, by double clicking this icon in the history bar that's back where we were started. Uh, let's go ahead and select this first sketch and get rid of it by pressing delete. The rectangle and circle tools are fairly self-explanatory. Just click on the rectangle, click on the first corner and the second corner and press escape. Click on the circle place its center where you want it to go and then draw a radius for it and press escape and that's all there is to sketching stop sketch now we're ready to make some three-dimensional objects um, go under the create menu these are all the various commands that we use to make three-dimensional objects um, the most common ones uh, that we like to use are extrude and revolve. Uh, we have extrude in a quick menu. Let's put revolve in the quick menu. Uh, pull this guy out. All right. So um, let's extrude something. Click on the extrude menu. It'll ask you to first select the profile to be extruded. 
we can select this and this or that. Um, let's just select these two and then you'll see this arrow, you can pull it up and it will extrude a uh, three-dimensional shape for us. Um, we can uh, just type in the distance that we want it to extrude. Uh, we can. This is a one-sided extrusion. If we wanted to, we could make it a two-sided extrusion, um, where um, each side up and down would be extruded a different distance. Or we could do a uh, symmetric extrusion, where both up and down extrusions would be the, the same distance. Um, say OK. Now, um, let's go ahead and uh, find uh, the middle part. We had a sketch over here that's disappeared. That's because Fusion has assumed that we were done with our sketches. To retrieve the sketches, go to this area over here, which is called the browser, and click this triangle. It will show us the sketch that has been hidden click on the light bulb to show the sketches again and um, then go to this sketch over here and now we can extrude that let's adjust our uh, view and you can pull that up a different distance and here we go Now, let's look at the Revolve method. Click on the Revolve Quick Menu. Uh, it'll ask you to select the profile that you want to revolve. I'll select my heart. It'll ask you to select an axis. Um, I'm going to um, revolve it around the y-axis, which is this green line over here and look what happens. I can specify how many degrees of revolution I want. Let's say 270. And press OK. Go back to the home view. And uh, this is the three-dimensional object that I have created by revolving a heart. Let's say new design to start with a clean slate. Let's uh, select the rectangle tool, click on the horizontal plane, and draw a square, say stop sketch, say extrude, select the face of the square and extrude it a certain distance, and press OK. Now it turns out that uh, when we sketch, we're not just limited to the three uh, fundamental planes, but we can sketch on the surface of any existing uh, three-dimensional object. So I'm going to sketch on the face of this cube. Um, I selected it. I can use my spline tool to draw a closed curve. I'm going to click out of it by pressing escape and stop sketch. Now this will allow us to do some powerful things. I can say extrude and select that shape and I can extrude that shape out of my cube. Um, this and the default is to join uh, the extrusion to the original cube, but I can also choose new body, in which case my extruded component will be a separate body from the original cube. Or I can say cut and move this arrow in the opposite direction, in which case it will cut a hole um, inside my cube. Or let's go back um, to the extrusion menu by double clicking the extrusion step in the history bar. Um, 
instead of cut, I can say intersect, which will only keep the part of the two shapes that are intersecting. If I press OK, this is what we end up with. All right, now let's grab the rectangle tool again, uh, draw a rectangle over here, um, escape, grab a line tool, draw a line over here, press escape, stop the sketch. Let's talk about revolve. Press on the revolve, select the rectangle profile. So um, it also turns out that when we try to revolve an object, we're not limited to one of those um, fundamental axes, uh, uh, x, y, and z, but I can actually revolve an object around any straight line that is either outside of that object or on the edge of the two-dimensional sketch. So in this case, I can revolve this rectangle along this side, which will give me a uh, cylinder. Or uh, let's delete that axis. I can revolve it along this side, which will give me a different cylinder. Again, I can delete that axis. Or I can revolve this profile around this line, which will give me uh, this three-dimensional shape. In this case, this shape is uh, intersecting with my previous shape and is cutting into it. Of course, I can change that to join my previous shape, and I'll end up with this uh, three-dimensional object. There are a lot of other useful uh, tools um, in the create menu um, such as loft uh, which we'll talk about in a in a future lesson um, torus coil um, one of these that's uh, probably very useful is a sphere um, command basically you select a plane you select a point and you select the diameter of your sphere very simple way to draw a ball